G'day Internet, Max Wright here, and I've got a really cool guest today, one that you guys have been asking for for a while in terms of their industry knowledge. We have Anthony Bertolino from iTrust. G'day Anthony, how are you? Hey Max, thanks for having me. Happy to chat again, man. My absolute pleasure. So as uh, we've discussed off camera, I've got um, yeah, I have a bunch of people who are really, really interested in, you know, where they've been in crypto for a while, they've made a bunch of money, um, and they, it would be nice to do it in a tax advantage way. Now, maybe we can help them out retrospectively. Maybe we can't. I don't know. You are from a company called iTrust, which helps people um, with certain structures and things. And we're going to get into that quite deeply in just a moment. So um, just by the way, guys, if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, because I, there's nothing I like more than helping my customers make money in crypto and then getting their profits out tax-free. That would be absolute perfection from where I'm kind of sitting from. So uh, we're, we're going to do a lot of that in the coming uh, weeks and months coming up. So now this is a very interesting journey for me because I've just, I, I've just never been involved in this war in the world of retirement vehicles and things like that. I just never have. And so this is a learning journey for me. Uh, I'm gonna go, so you're gonna be just right here looking over my shoulder as I just do all my due diligence and learn. Um, and so I think this is going to be uh, super, super fun. And I should mention at the top, um, this is something that's useful only for US citizens, uh, US taxpayers only, I should say. Um, US tax residents would be the accurate term. So, all right, let's get into this. So Anthony, help us out. I'm a crypto guy. I've made um, some profits. Tell me, how does your company help me? And, and what, what do you got to share with us today? Yeah. So, you know, as you mentioned, retirement planning, retirement accounts are not something that's usually on people's minds. I mean, growing up, most of us in, in high school and university and a lot of professional life, uh, usually there's not a lot of people talking about IRAs and 401ks and retirement accounts. So in the US, people have heard the term IRA, they maybe heard the term 401k. If they have one and they know what that is, this message will be very clear and right away, they're gonna go, I need to work with iTrust. For the people that don't, you know, to take a few steps back, the US takes a lot of money in taxes on your income, on your investments, we all know that. But luckily, they have created unique structures that are very easy to use. They're just commonly not known about. And these are things called IRAs and 401ks are the retirement accounts. So an IRA is an individual retirement account, and it's specifically designed for investors to put money in and invest, and they get major tax benefits. So one of those benefits is every time you buy Bitcoin and then sell Bitcoin. When you sell it for that profit, you obviously have to pay taxes, right? In the US, there's a short-term capital gains or long-term capital gains, depending on the timeline. You also have state uh, taxes. So when people make a trade, they're paying anywhere between 20 to 40% usually of their profits and taxes. Inside of an IRA, all those trades are tax-free. And so, you know, if Bitcoin goes to 100K and you want to take some risk off the table and you sell half, you don't pay any taxes inside of an IRA. So all of that cash is still there 100%, no taxes. And um, it allows for modifying your portfolio, making whether you're a buy and hold guy who just makes some risk management or you're an active trader, it's something that if you're in the US and you're in crypto and you, you don't have a crypto IRA, um, it's time to, to get ahead of that because the future is, is obviously going to continue to grow. The asset class. Okay, so definitely piqued my interest, uh, both for myself and also for the YouTube channel. I see the headline already. Make your uh, get, make uh, make your crypto profits tax free. So I love that. So let's go deep diving in that. Now there's um. So first question: This only applies if you when you put money in your IRA up front. If I've already bought Bitcoin and I'm sitting on a big gain, is there anything you can do to help me, or is that out of your hands? Yeah, so the IRAs are specifically designed as a proactive planning tool. So the people listening are going to fall into kind of two buckets. Either the first bucket, they have an IRA or a 401k or a retirement account. It's at one of these old dinosaur companies, Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Vanguard, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo. They can move that over, do a rollover or a transfer. They can move over a portion of that or the whole thing into iTrust Capital and start buying and selling crypto. The good thing there is some people will have 20K, 50K, a few hundred K in these old dinosaur companies sitting in stocks and bonds. And they'd, they'd rather be in crypto, but they don't wanna take it out and pay taxes from early distribution of a retirement account. So now they can roll it over, non-taxable event and trade crypto. 
um, with us at iTrust Capital. Then the second bucket of people are people who don't have a retirement account. They just have been buying assets, investing in assets from Coinbase or Kraken and general exchanges. They might have a brokerage account at a Fidelity with stocks or Robinhood. Those people, they have the ability to start a new IRA. Now, IRAs are designed to be a build it up over time. So you can only put in six to 7,000 per year if you have money that you're putting in for the first time. This is called a contribution. Every year, Americans can contribute to their IRAs, six to 7,000, and it's designed again to be built up over time. Now, the people who have these existing retirement accounts, hey, they roll it over, they might have a big stash right away in crypto. For people that don't have retirement accounts, they want to start doing contributions year over year and building that up. And if they do it in like a Roth IRA, you know, we offer a Roth crypto IRA that all the gain, not only the trades are tax-free, but the gains, when, even when you pull it out during retirement are tax-free. So if you're putting in 7K a year and that does a 10X and that's, you know, 70K, 140K, right? You build that up over time. All of those gains are completely tax-free. And that's only if the asset class does a 10X. You know, what if you buy Cardano and it does a 50X over 10 years or Polkadot or Chainlink, right? We have a wide range of assets. And this is something that most Americans are not optimizing for taxes. They're just, just kind of trading crypto. And now they can do that in an optimized manner. Okay. So, okay. So hang on, you, you stick your money in there. You make money day by day, week by week, month by month, whatever your trading strategy is year by year, it's just yep. going up. All that is tax-free. And then Correct. when you pull it out, it's also tax-free. For a Roth IRA, when you pull it out, it is also tax-free. Now, so there's two kinds of IRAs, I'll, I'll clarify. There's a traditional IRA and there's a Roth IRA. Now, Americans, they can pick. Do I want a traditional or a Roth? The traditional, when you put in money, you actually get a tax write-off. So you lower your income for the year, you get a write-off. And then it grows tax-free when you trade, and then when you pull it out, when you retire, you pay income tax. So you got a write-off, you still got to trade tax-free. And then when you retire, you just pay income tax. So whatever that 10, 20, whatever, you're, whatever bracket you're in when you retire. Now a Roth IRA, when you put in money, you get no write-off. So you're just putting in money from your bank account. You don't get a tax write-off. Not that big of a deal for me personally. You still can trade tax-free. But then when you retire and you take it out, it's still tax-free, no income tax. So it depends, people basically, do you want a little small write-off now and then pay income tax later? Or do you want no write-off, but then you have a granddaddy portfolio with new taxes? Most crypto investors go for the Roth option. Okay. And when you say you pull it out, it's tax-free. Are there any limitations? Like you have to be a certain age or something like that. Are there any limitations on when you can pull it out, the quantity you can pull it out, bulk sum, trickle it out, nearly things, any rules? Yeah, so there are um, the sort of distribution or the withdrawal of, of IRAs. There is a sort of general framework that the IRS has set up. First and foremost, you can always buy and sell inside of it, right? So let's, let's clarify the difference between trading and like moving the cash in the IRA and sitting in cash versus taking it out. Taking it out is a distribution which you have to do systematically. So knowing that we can trade and, and go to cash at any time in the account and be safe from volatility, you can always do that. But now if you want to take money out- For lifestyle. Are, so that's, let's, 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 you're taking it out for lifestyle or some other investment 100%. or whatever. 100%. Correct. You can, within the asset, within the retirement structure, you can be exposed to an asset. You can go, go kick to cash and be safe, safe in cash. You can, you can do whatever, right? Within the asset, that's all tax-free consequence. We're talking about pulling it out to spend on a holiday to, for a lifestyle, for whatever. Yep. Okay. What's the rules on that? Correct. Good question. So first and foremost, with a Roth IRA, you can always take out the principal, right? So you put in your 7K a year, uh, you built that up <clears throat> over time, it's been growing. You can always take out the principal. Whatever you originally put in, you can take that out. No taxes, no problems, anytime. Now, the, the better question is, when can I take out the profit? So first off, there are some exclusions. You know, first time home purchase, you can take it out anytime. Uh, advanced education, you can take out the profits anytime. Uh, medical expenses, you can take out the profits anytime. These are, there's an exclusion bucket. The second bucket, which you can also use, is the early retirement account bucket. If you have made a couple hundred grand, a million, whatever you want, and you're ready to say, uh, I'm ready to retire and start pulling it out of my Roth, 
You can, you can do that is in your thirties, right? Your forties, each work with a, a tax planner. Um, now the only downside is if you file for early retirement, you can still work, you can still earn money, but you can't put money back into the Roth. So it's sort of like, if you're going to start pulling from the bucket, you got to start pulling from the bucket, which is fine. And then the third one is if you don't do an early retirement, if you don't do like an exclusion, like a home purchase or uh, education, then you have the typical retirement age, which is 59 and a half, where you start drawing from it. So most of the sophisticated crypto investors, they file for the early retirement and then they start drawing, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, whenever they sort of feel comfortable. And, um, it, you know, usually you kind of build that out, right? How much do I feel comfortable uh, pulling out uh, when I want to go through retirement, right? And maybe it's 3K a month, maybe it's 1K a month, maybe it's 10K a month. It's a, a personal financial planning decision. Gotcha. So I guess um, a question that pops up are on two fronts, but is can I have multiple IRAs or start a, a new a Roth IRA? Yeah, great question. So if someone already has an IRA at like a Fidelity or a Schwab, um, you can always open a new one at iTrust Capital and leave that other one there. The only... Um, not downside. I mean, the only reality is that each year when you want to put in your money, six or 7,000, you can only put in six or 7,000 maximum per year from, from like a bank account, a contribution. So then you got to decide, hey, is half of that going to Schwab, half of that going to iTrust? Is all of that going to iTrust? Because you, you only have that, say, 7,000. Okay. So most people, they just then put it into iTrust. But you could divvy it up into multiple different companies if you want it. Okay. So uh, so that answers that question. So it's it's a limit of seven thousand dollars per year contribution to a Roth IRA, Roth IRA across all of the IRAs that you may have. Okay, from a particular one where you start pulling money out tax free, it's now closed. You can no longer make further contributions to it. It sounds like I can start up another one, start making contributions to that one over there. So that would be optimal, but the IRS does consider a early retirement filing to be for the whole IRA system. Okay. So when you, yeah, so you can no longer go, hey, I'm going to start pulling from iTrust and then go put money in Schwab. You, you could in like a brokerage account, you know, Coinbase, Charles Schwab, but not in a retirement account. Um, and most people, you don't need to. I mean, if, if you already made a couple hundred grand or whatever, and you want to start pulling out of your Roth IRA, hey, hey if you want to keep investing, just don't do it in a retirement account, right? Gotcha. So I'm, what I'm hearing, I'm, I'm hearing there's this some super crazy awesome structure out there called a Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. Every every U.S. tax resident gets to use it. It's a one time shot. You get to and you, you you get you only get to use the concept once. You can you do it across multiple companies, but there's a period of your life where yes. you can use this and to save tax free, to invest tax free. And to pull out uh, your profits tax free, the moment you do that, you um, you you lose this gift, and you can no longer have a Roth IRA for the rest of your life. Is that right? Sort of, yeah. And most people they never start the journey, right? You have to start the journey. You have to open a Roth, mm -hmm. and then when that journey sort of ends, is when you start taking money out of the Roth. Um, you know, for example, the founder of PayPal, Peter Thiel, he, he a large audit just came out that he has a Roth IRA. That he's been building up that has two billion dollars in it and he, he hasn't started pulling from it yet because he's a savage he's probably going for the whole mile and pass it down right because a roth ira you can also pass down and like you don't technically have to withdraw from a roth ira if you don't want to so you can file for early retirement or you can wait till 59 and a half or you can pass that bad boy down and it's uh, most countries have something similar to ira structures they're usually called different names but the problem is the market is not as free as it is here in the U.S. where companies like us can pop up and with institutional custody, 24-7 trading and offer clients this ability. In most other countries, you have to go through like a pension kind of government type of, you know, walled garden system. And so um, investors who are in crypto in America and they don't have a Roth IRA, a crypto Roth IRA at iTrust Capital, they're just not optimizing for wealth, basically. Yeah. So is there any downside? I'm trying to figure out the downside. What is the downside here? Is, is if the people put in money and they put in, you know, maybe someone only has a couple grand and they put it in the Roth IRA and then Bitcoin goes down temporarily and then they want to sell and pull it out. Well, you just, you just sold at a loss and you pulled out your principal. Like, okay. I mean, that's fine. It's, it's definitely for the people who are longer term investors. They know what they're buying. 
if they put a couple thousand in Bitcoin or crypto that they're not going to be poor. Um, for the people who have their finances in order, um, there, in my opinion, really is no downside. We also offer precious metals on the platform. So when you, you know, say you buy your ETH, it goes to 10K, you sell the cash, you know, I think ETH is going to crash. I think it's going back to 2K, right? In the future, you say that. You don't even have to hold dollars. You could actually hold gold or silver if you think that the dollar is still going to be hyperinflating and you actually want a different store of value. So you can choose where to store your value in the platform, crypto, dollars, gold, or you can mix and match. And we have you know, more than 15 cryptos. I mean, we have Polygon, we have Cardano, we have Polkadot, similar offering as like a Coinbase or a Crack Energy Gemini. Gotcha. So uh, is there any limitation? Now there is an iTrust limitation I'm gathering, but broadly speaking on the, on the law of Roth IRIs, are there any limitations to what one can invest in in your Roth IRA, like for example, for Peter Till to amass $2 million, $2 billion, and he put $7,000 in a year, I'm assuming he's, this is like a venture fund he's invested yep. in that's done very well. So that would be something that I trust does not do. But if there's a point in time where a customer says, okay, I think crypto has run its course, uh, you know, it's a dead donkey, this Bitcoin nonsense, I'm going to go and invest it in venture capital, real estate, stocks, then either it's a service that I trust will expand to at some point, or they can take their money. They can they can roll over their funds from I trust to another Roth IRA company. Have I got that correct? correct? That's one hundred percent correct. Most people are going to be leaving the world of just stocks and bonds at Fidelity and Schwab and come here to I trust for like the crypto IRA experience. If they then want to go do like private placements, essentially like venture angel. Uh, things that are real estate, they can always go to another provider. There's like real estate specific IRAs. What's more than likely is we're building a conglomerate. So I trust capital will likely offer these other types of assets in the future. And we just believe that the, the best market is crypto right now. Um, but we've expanded into precious metals. There's a world where we expand into, into other type of assets as well. Uh, but if they're never happy, the great thing, you can leave Fidelity, you can leave I trust, you can leave any of these companies and go somewhere else and it's a non-taxable event. It's just a rollover or a transfer. And, and as an American citizen, you have this right to move your IRA where you want to. Now there is ex, uh, exclusions on some things you cannot invest in. You cannot invest into like art in your IRA. It's specifically called out as uh, not possible by the IRS. It's, it's not uh, legal, so to speak, not compliant. Um, you cannot collect rare coins like there's a pirate coin that's worth a million dollars and you think it's going to be worth two million and you try to buy it. That's that's not allowed. But crypto very much is compliant as according to the tax rules. OK. Um, and so I remember a question I wanted to jump back to, which is you mentioned the exclusions of a home. Is that a first home only your first home purchase or any home purchase? No, it is a first home purchase. Uh, but let's say you did want to go into real estate. You can actually buy real estate in your IRA, uh, but A would be with a different company. We don't, we don't do that. But there is some of our clients who go, hey, I'm going to make it big in crypto. Then I'm going to sell and I'll leave a little bit in gold. And then I'm actually going to go buy real estate. Now, if you buy real estate with your IRA, which again is not with us, but other companies do this. I just know the industry well. You cannot live in it. Your family cannot live in it. You cannot, it's, it's, you just need to buy it and rent it out maybe maybe get a property manager and you need to sort of stay away from it it's an investment it's not a home that you can stay in rent it you can't go vacation in it but that is possible um, gotcha. but if you want to just take the money out of the ira and buy a home to live in then the exclusion is the first home purchase gotcha okay i i understand that uh again i'm looking for downsides i'm not seeing any is there any other gotchas that you can think of any other downside what i we, we talked about the downside of being market risk like you, 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 okay, you yep. put your money in your roth ira you invest in bitcoin bitcoin goes down but okay that's that's market risk i don't call that roth ira risk um there's is there is there any other downside that i'm missing about roth iras so tr roth iras not in particular traditional iras which are different those give you the write off because you got that write-off, you're not able to take out the principal. Where with the Roth IRA, you can always take out the principal and then you take out the profit strategically. With a traditional, to take out the principal and the profit, it has to be um, according to like the strategic rules, right? Um, so Roth IRAs are the most flexible. Now there are other risks aside from market risk. So first and foremost, when you store your assets at Coinbase or Kraken, there's custody risk, right? So we do secure the assets. We're partnered with Coinbase Custody, 
and we're partnered with Curve, which is owned by PayPal. And so, and we have a $370 million insurance policy. So you still have to understand, I mean, we are a 24 seven exchange, uh, not, we're not an exchange, we're, we're a retirement platform that we plug into exchanges. So we work with different exchanges, um, but clients do this all from a single platform. They log in, it, it's all from the iTrust platform. So yeah, I mean, there is potential custody risk, but we have a high level team of engineers, a lot of audits. It's with the big boys like Coinbase Custody and, and PayPal. And, um, but, but the Roth IRA itself, um, there's no risk that I, I'm aware of. I mean, this is still not financial advice. This is like educational. I'm an investor. I really love these, these things. People should, when they're dealing with retirement accounts, probably talk to their accountant or their, their tax professional or their financial advisor to, to do the, the, know the nuances of their financial plan. Um, but it's very much a tool that most people just doesn't, don't even know exists. Yeah. Oh, from what I'm hearing, it's a very, very cool tool. Uh, and I, well, I th yes. Yeah, so, and one of the things that kind of caught my eye, cause I was like, um, I'm just, I've just lived in lots of different countries in, in my life and I've traveled around. And so having a retirement, yet, like when I was like 16, I was like, you know, the Australian government was confiscating part of my wages and stuck it in some retirement account that they controlled. And, you know, over the 20 years, I think they've lost it all in fees. But and the whole time, every I just this is this paperwork. It's annoying. It's a headache, and they they harass me. And I'm like, guys, you've got seventy five dollars of my money. It used to be a thousand. Now it's seventy five dollars. Go away. I don't want to know that. Know about you. And I'm not I'm not allowed to touch it for like until I'm sixty five or something in Australia. And I've got to I get harassed by paperwork every year. And I'm just like, piss off. I don't care. Go away. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but this, but and I cannot get it out, and I cannot close the account, and it absolutely drives That's me, insane. infuriates me. But th but I, at any point. I can close an IRA, move to a different country, take all my wealth with me now. Uh, and there'll be, we know um, in that instance, I would be taking early retirement. The only definition of early retirement is that you give up the gift of the Roth IRA and you can't re-enter that world. Did, did I understand that correctly? So yeah, there still are ways that when you take the money out, you have to sort of structure it. There's things called like periodic equal payments where maybe you get a check of like 5,000 a month, or, you know, you, you withdraw 5,000 a month um, there, you have to sort of structure the withdrawals. Um, you can't just like, you know, let's say you, you turn 50 and you're like, all right, I got a million here. Let me just pull out the dump truck, take the million leave. That's not possible. It has to, there is st structure behind it, but um, it's not, there's no like bureaucratic process you have to get through to get it approved. There is no approvals. Like you can take the money out anytime, even if you wanted to, but then you would, there's a, there's a 10% penalty. The IRS would impose on you. Like you can still get the money out early, especially if you're willing to pay the penalty. And some people are, you're like, Hey, you know, maybe I turned 50 K into 500 K doing a bunch of tax free trades. And I'm just going to take that out. And if you guys want your 10% penalty, just like take it, you know what I mean? Theoretically. But, uh, so, so there are penalties and taxes potentially if you don't follow the structure. Um, but if you follow the structure, yeah, I mean, you know, it's more of like a, a passive cash flow thing that will come, come to you each month. Okay. So, okay. So let's explore that a little bit better, but even that sounded good. So, I mean, had I been paying taxes as an ordinary income, it probably would have been a lot more than 10%. You're oh, yeah. saying if at the end, I just want to just empty the account, break all the rules and just, just give me the lump sum that no matter what your income is at the time, no matter what tax bracket you fall into at that time, it's still just a 10% tax on emptying the IRA. So it's a 10% penalty and then you pay income tax. Ah. So then that's where you might, you might have like a foreign income exclusion. There's like sophisticated tax planning things that it is way above my head, but that you would, no matter what you pay a 10% penalty and then you pay income. And then it's like, what is your income at? Do you have any exclusions? Do you have any write-offs? Where do you live? Because there's a foreign income exclusion as a U.S. citizen if you're not on shore anymore. This is stuff that I don't suggest anyone does without talking to a financial advisor. I, I suggest paying your taxes. I suggest doing everything legally. But there are things like Roth IRAs like that are fully legal. You just need to have the right uh, the right ideas. And iTrust Capital is really the start of sophisticated crypto investing, in my opinion. Especially okay. if people just want to do it simply and you don't have to worry about all this crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me go. So help me understand now these withdrawal, the withdrawal things. Like you said there's a schedule. Like, how does that work? Um, can you give me some details on that? Yeah, so if it's the, so if you're retiring early, if you're not 59 and a half, there's something called uh, equal periodic payments or something like that. So periodic payments. Um, and that's where I'm, I'm 40. I want to retire 
I'm going to start pulling out money. And then you basically pull it out consistently every year. You can already have been in cash or you could still be in Bitcoin or you could be in a diversified portfolio. It's up to you. But then you can start pulling it out every month. So maybe you pull out, you know, 8% per year for the next 12 years until it's empty, right? Or you pull out a fixed amount. Maybe you pull out, I'm pulling out 5,000 every month for the neck until I, until I die until, or, or until it empties, right? There's totally different ways to structure it. And that's just where of like the first step is, is, you know, a normal person, get yourself a couple hundred K, maybe a million in these accounts and then go, Hey, now, if I want to take it out, maybe I start figuring out that distribution plan. <clears throat> or if not, maybe I just take out the principal and then I go live on my other investments and I leave the Roth IRA for just later, right? And instead I'm gonna sell my, my regular crypto and pay taxes and the Roth IRA just keeps growing tax-free. There's different ways to structure it. I'll, gotcha. I'll personally be pulling from my Roth IRAs in my late thirties. So I just turned 30. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, okay, but because I was still quite uh, relatively aggressive. So like for like, like if you, so let's say you retire in your late thirties, you're saying you could still, empty the account at a, at a rate, like over 12 years, I would just say like 12 years, like I pull out 8% for 12 years. Oh, well, but it's yeah. 8% of 8% of 8%. So it kind of forever gets smaller, even though it might be growing. Yeah. There's different ways to structure it, whether it's like a nominal fixed dollar amount or a percentage amount. And then there's also the whole world of uh, something called, you know, fire or early retirement. Uh, so early retirement is a thing, but then it's also a philosophy and it falls with some of the, falls under something called FIRE, which is financially independent, retire early, FIRE, where maybe some people pull out 4% or 5% per year. And then theoretically, as long as crypto keeps going up more than 4 or 5% per year, your bucket of money will actually stay the same or keep growing, even though you're pulling out 4%, right? And this is like an endless cash flow thing. And, you know, this, you know, this definitely is falling into like a sort of financial planning, accounting guru conversation which is like you clearly have amazing questions um and it just shows how deep the rabbit hole can go for your your listeners who are willing to you know on the small side just build up a Roth IRA and be tax free and be rich the people who want to do this more sophisticated thing start building up your Roth IRA or roll over another retirement account you have and now with crypto you can see the lifestyle that can be possible in 5 10 15 years yeah absolutely so um all right, now let's talk about uh, upon death, I've got some money in my IRA uh, that is transferable to um, uh, heirs tax-free or what's, how does that, what's that process look like? Yeah, so when you sign up for an account at iTrust Capital or any retirement account, beneficiaries are put on file. You can always modify those beneficiaries. If something is to happen to the account owner, it passes to the beneficiaries. They then inherit the Roth IRA when you inherit a Roth IRA, and again, you want to talk to an accountant, uh, that heir gets the money tax-free, again, to my knowledge, but they can't just hoard it. I think they need to start taking it out within X amount of time. And that's to make sure people aren't like taking a Roth IRA and then passing it down for generations and then they maybe buy the country, right? Uh, because of inflation. So yeah, it's it passes down tax-free. Your son or daughter or family member, or girlfriend or wife, they inherit it uh, tax-free, but then they need to start taking it out after some amount of time that I am not totally sure because I am not a CPA. Gotcha. So, okay, but the air, okay, they still get full access to it. It's still, um, it still all goes to them eventually. Uh, it's still tax free to them, so even so, even they're they're earning five hundred thousand dollars a year. They're in the top tax bracket. They still get this income tax free. That, to my knowledge, is correct. Okay, okay, but they That's, can't afford it, so they have to start pulling it out. And they have um, to start pulling it out, no matter what. That's and, after and some another, period of time. Yeah, another great thing is that with our platform, you don't have to sell and pull out dollars. You can, if you want, you can actually take physical distribution of your crypto. So maybe you get half a Bitcoin every three months, or maybe you get two ETH each month. You can actually take out your physical asset as well and like send it to your ledger or whatever when you're taking your distributions. And when you're in that period of taking your distributions. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. All of this uh, sounds super awesome and an absolute no brainer from what we've heard so far. Like I'm going to start doing this. I don't know why I've never, never been interested in retirement. I do know why, but Never mind. I've never been interested in retirement vehicles, but there just seems to be no downside to this from, from what I can see. Um, yes. And so, okay. So now let's go a little bit deeper. Now let's focus on iTrust. 
And uh, I don't know if you just want to kick it off a little bit and give me, tell me, give me the spiel about iTrust and uh, where you guys started, how long you've been around and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So all of this whole industry falls into the sort of, you know, self-directed retirement account industry. And so we are the number one by every single metric, the number one crypto IRA platform in America. We have more than a billion dollars of assets on the platform, you know, tens of thousands of clients. We just surpassed $2 billion in trading volume. So again, we have a 24 seven platform. Um, and we specifically make it very easy for investors who want the tax benefits and want to invest in crypto. They don't need to deal with a whole bunch of paperwork or, or you know, it's simple. You make an account, you either do a rollover or a contribution and you trade. It feels like a Coinbase or a Robinhood in a way, but you get the tax benefits. We offer a wide range of crypto assets that are being increased every day. I mean, yesterday we added Polygon, uh, Polygon Matic, which is a layer two Ethereum solution. You know, we have Bitcoin, we have Ethereum, we have Litecoin, and, but we also have Polkadot and Cardano and Sushi and Uniswap and Compound and, and you know, soon Maker and Curve and Solana. And so it's anyone who's a real crypto investor, they have a few projects that they love. We likely have that project and now you can invest in it essentially tax free. And, you know, again, the security is important. You can find that on our website as well. Coinbase Custody is one of our cold storage providers. And then Curve, who's owned by PayPal, is another one of our cold storage providers. And, um, you know, ultimately, I, I say people just head to itrustcapital.com, set up a free account, use the promo code SUCCESS. So use the promo code SUCCESS. It'll actually give you one month for free when you if you do set up the, the platform fully. Um, but for now, just use the promo code, make a free account. You won't be charged. Check out the platform and just see if it's something that you can see yourself being used um, to the listeners. And they can always schedule a call as well. So we have you know real humans that work here who are real crypto IRA specialists, and they can answer all those questions. So you don't feel like you have to just you know, talk to a robot or, or talk in emails, you know, the real humans, real specialists here to help. Gotcha. And so let's help understand um, some of the, like the fees in iTrust. How does iTrust make, make money? And uh, yeah, what, what, are the, what is the customer paying along the way? Great question. So similar to the story you mentioned with your retirement account, and even it's even like this in the US, a lot of companies, whether it's these government pension systems or these old legacy mutual funds and stocks and bonds, they have a lot of hidden fees. Normally you'll own a retirement account with some mutual funds and you actually won't even think there's any fees. It feels like there's no fees. You know, you just see your amount, your statement every month. And what's happening is these mutual funds and these, these real people who run the investment strategies and they own the funds are usually charging between one to 3% per year. And they're just slowly siphoning it and people don't see it happening. Ours is completely different. We do have fees. They're very transparent. Every single trade is 1% per trade. So cheaper than Coinbase, right? Coinbase is around 1.5%, uh, a little more than like say Kraken. Kraken's are a little more than half a percent. So we're firmly at 1% per trade, but it's tax-free trading. So you're likely saving 10 to 20% each trade in taxes potentially. Um, and then we also have a flat fee that includes storage, customer service, insurance, platform maintenance, all of these things. Um, and that's $29.95 per month. So 1% per trade, $30 a month flat. And that includes essentially everything you would need. There's no additional hidden fees, no, nothing like that. Gotcha. Can you deposit crypto assets? That's a great question. That is something that I think is one of the most important things for mainstream crypto IRA adoption. The IRS specifically requires you to deposit with US dollars. And it makes sense. They, they want to keep themselves as the medium of exchange. They want to make sure that they're in the puzzle there or else maybe the dollar wouldn't even be in this world of crypto IRAs. People would deposit crypto, they would withdraw it, they would pay no taxes and the dollar might even not even be used. So to make your deposits, it does have to be in dollars. So in the short term, you would need to send in a wire, a check, an ECH transfer, et cetera. Um, in the more midterm this year, we're looking to design a system where you, it feels like you're depositing crypto, where you literally would deposit crypto, but it would then be sold for dollars and then be put in the platform where you can buy it back. So essentially you would be sending your crypto, it would be being sold and you can buy back. Now, the, the reason why that could be good for some people is let's say they bought you know ETH at 4K 
and now it's down to 2K. Well, if you send it to us to make a contribution and it gets sold, and then you, you buy it back, you bought ETH at 4K, you actually sold it at 2K, you get a tax write-off, a 2K loss, and now it's in a Roth IRA to grow tax-free. So th th this is another kind of level of the tax optimization game that should be possible with us in the near future. That is, and even though that's a feature that you guys are doing in the near future, that, that, that still exists right now when they just go ahead, they can liquidate it on Coinbase or Kraken or wherever they are, take that tax, tax loss. So if you want to, if you, you know, if you are experiencing losses in crypto, you can um, get, you know, uh, materialize that, that loss, use it on your ordinary income. Well, hang on, not necessarily your ordinary income, I shouldn't say that, but use it on your, your tax return this year put it into the Roth IRA and off you go to the races as a tax-free vehicle. So that's kind of a cool strategy. So given this, uh, you know, we're down here at 30K, Bitcoin was up at 65 a couple of months ago. There's probably a lot of people who could take advantage of that right now. So that would be something to, to mention. Also, um, with the, the link, if, I think I'll have a link in the description. Well, yep. I don't think I will. I will have a link in the description. Um, and so you can make sure you go ahead and click that link. And if you, if you don't, you can go there and type in success. And what was the deal? They get the, if they use that link or use that promo code, they get a free month. Is that correct? Yeah, they get a free month. So no matter what, the platform is free as you look at it, use it, et cetera, until you fund the account. When you finally fund your account, it starts, you pay one, uh, <clears throat> $29.95 a month. If they use that promo code, the first month is for free. So no matter what, it's a free account until you fund it. And then because we have custody costs, security costs, customer service, et cetera, it's $30 a month. They save that first month. So using the promo code success, they, they, they save $30 as well. Okay, good to know. Um, all right, we are getting uh, close here to the top of the hour. Any other final thoughts that you, um, maybe I wasn't smart enough to ask the right questions or something, a really cool selling point? Is there something that you think well, I've, I've missed here in this conversation? No, this was legitimately one of the better interviews I've been in in quite a while. Yesterday, I had actually the one of the worst interviews ever. And it was it was people who actually didn't know about crypto or at all, in, even though they ran a channel, uh, where you, I can tell, you know, you're a sophisticated investor with, understanding macro and, and a lot of these kind of things that are required to have a conversation of this magnitude. And so I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ask more questions, better questions. than if I was just giving a pitch, I even could. So good job. All right. Well, flattery will get you everywhere. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I do. I do have some more questions though. I wanted to get into um, security and custody. So in the world of crypto, not your keys, not your money. Um, so, you know, when, when using any of these services, uh, is well, let, let's talk about um, how you guys are storing your keys uh, and you know a little bit more about your uh, security method on, on your side. Excellent question. So I am a crypto native myself, right? You know, major user of DeFi, major investor, etc. And so I acutely know the as as you do and many listeners, the benefits and the drawbacks of securing your own keys. I'll say first and foremost, the IRS for retirement accounts requires a custodian to hold your funds regardless. So there's a reason why when you have a 401k, they don't send a stock certificate to your house or a bond certificate to your house because you can't take custody of your retirement account or else it's a distribution, right? Or else it's, you got to pay the tax. It's early distribution. It's a penalty. So no matter what, we have to do that to be compliant. But now that we do do that, it provides some benefits to investors who don't necessarily either want to manage their money at all like that, or maybe a portion of it, they want to manage themselves like their regular crypto. And then they're willing to have a portion of it in cold storage with a provider because that's sort of a, a diversification aspect. I actually like love that myself. I hold a little crypto, but I use institutional security even for myself um, just because of, of hacks and attackers and things like that. Hacks is, is not a good one if you're if you're doing it properly, but more, more of like attackers and, and social engineering and things like that. Um, so the way we store our keys, we have a very robust process of vetting due diligence on providers before we work with any. This has caused us to three years ago partner with Curve, who was one of the leader in, in a sort of multi-party computation, air-gapped cold storage solution. And for the first two years of our business, everyone would say, hey, who, who even is Curve? Like they've never heard about them. It's not Coinbase. It's not Kraken. It's not Gemini. And, you know, we always try to tell people how sophisticated and how good they were. And slowly but surely, people understood if they were deep in the industry, they knew. And then, you know, less than a year ago, PayPal came in and acquired Curve. 
And PayPal had been doing their due diligence and for them to choose Curve means a lot. And so that, you know, we've been, uh, you know, people can finally see that our due diligence is really good. And now we've engaged as a second partner, Coinbase Custody. So we've integrated with them about two months ago and that is now live. And I think that not only is Coinbase Custody one of the premier cold storage solutions with a, a massive insurance policy that we have access to, but people will start to hear about Coinbase custody more and more over the next few years as they start to engage with maybe some banks, maybe some large institutions that you, other institutions that people have heard of. And so we take our, our sort of privacy, security, cold storage very, very seriously. And we work with the brightest and the best as well as having an internal kind of risk management team that looks at it even further, as well as having SOC, uh, SOC audits that are performed on the, on the solutions themselves. Okay, very, very cool. Um, I think I'm all done with questions uh, again. So guys, uh, yeah. Oh, you know what? No, sorry, one more question just came up. Competition, competition to iTrust. Can you just uh, talk a little bit about that? What differentiates yourself from your competitors um, and, and anything you wanna to do to sell yourselves? Yeah, so there's sort of kind of two companies that exist in, in the crypto IRA space. There's these companies that will make you open up an LLC or make you open up a trust. They use that as a shell company to then try to make a crypto IRA. You kind of spin up like a, a, a different corporation. It's a shell, like a, literally a shell entity. And then you try to use that shell entity to get access to like a Gemini or a Coinbase or a Kraken. And then you try to trade in this shell company. This was the only way to do crypto retirement accounts about three years ago before we came around. There still are a few companies that exist. They their goal is to sell people a shell company and then you try to get in with an exchange and then you're living in this gray area of the law that if you're audited by the IRS and you say this is a crypto IRA, you might want to speak to a lawyer. Even if you do this, you might want to speak to a lawyer first. So this is the old way. It's, it's, it's not suggested by any means. Now, there is another company called Bitcoin IRA who actually came to market about a year, a year and a half before us, Bitcoin IRA but they are very different than us. So they have a great branding, great marketing, but they have much less assets, much less users because their, their design is very different than ours. We're very transparent, very low fees. They have commissioned salespeople and it's more Wolf of Wall Street. So they charge around eight to 12%. Um, you know, they'll often tell really great stories about how their clients have made a lot of money. Um, it's just very different. We both sell similar assets. They have, you know, five assets, then they have BitGo as a storage provider. Um, we have quite a bit more, and then we have very low fees. So we're just an evolution of them. I'm happy that what they've done for the space, you know, being here before us. Um, but when you look at any player in the industry, apples for apples, we're moving much faster on the product and the innovation side. We have much larger insurance policies and we have way more assets. I mean, way more assets. I mean, if you wanna trade Cardano, you only can go to Itris Capital or Uniswap or Yearn or any, you know, anything like that. And we also have very exciting things coming in regards to like staking in your IRA. So passive interest in your IRA, um, as well as some DeFi things that are gonna come out in the next year that are, They'll, they'll blow people away. Okay. Okay. Good stuff. So, uh, yeah, guys. All right. So I'll, I'll chip in with my little, little, um, whatever my, my two cents here. Um, number one, I don't, I, just, I don't see a re there's no reason for anybody not to do any U S taxpayer not to do this. I think this is just a, a killer strategy. Uh, I wish I knew about it before I didn't, uh, I'll be taking part in this from now on. Uh, and there's another thing, uh, it was mentioned, but I want to really press upon this. Um, once you're a crypto millionaire, and you will be, uh, my firm belief is anybody who puts any, any reasonable amount of cash in this now, within five, 10 years, you're going to be a crypto millionaire. Um, I can tell you the stress is real about managing everything, have, managing your own keys um, and doing it all yourself. The point that was brought up about having a, you know, a Bitcoin over here and having your own... A, I can tell you right now that it just becomes the richer you get, the more and more important it becomes. So just start to have, because then just so you're not, it's just diversification of custody of your Bitcoin. And this sum, um, just to start chipping away, getting in early, putting it in, in, in a tax free, in a tax advantaged way um, is a really, really smart option. So I just, I think this is something that literally everybody should do. 
So um, reach out to iTrust Capital. Again, link will be in the descriptions. And also help me out because I've got a very, very educated community, very, very smart community. Question for you guys. Are there any questions that you wish I asked that I did not? Uh, please put them in the comments below. Is there anything that you think we should have added to this conversation, a point that you want to make? Let me know in the comments because I bet you we will probably have uh, Anthony on here again. I think that's just going to be, we're just going to, we've learned so much. It's such a, such a cool tool. Let me know in the comments below if we're missing anything, if you wanted us to ask any questions. And finally, let me know if you're excited by this. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. I'm excited by it. I think you guys should be too. Um, so with that, any final thoughts? And if not, I'll wrap it up. No, Max, that was great. I'm happy to chat with you. Uh, amazing interview, great questions. Your audience, now they know about crypto IRAs. The ones who take action are gonna be very happy in five or 10 years. The ones who don't, maybe they'll still do well, but maybe they'll have lost a few million in taxes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> awesome. All right, well, thank you so much. Remember, smash up that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If uh, this kind of thing is, is your flavor, this is what we do on this channel. We teach people how to make money with crypto. And now we teach people how to do it in a tax advantage way. And we might have some more of those things coming up in the near week. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And thank you very much, everybody. Take care. And thank you, especially, Anthony. Take care. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Thanks.